So in this video, I'm going to talk to Daniela, who is our head of admissions at Futura, but also she's halfway through grad med school at Warwick University. So I'm going to answer some of the questions that you've been submitting on Instagram, some of the things that you can't Google, or just getting insights into what it's like being a med student at all, what it's like being a grad, and understanding a little bit more about how you can get there. So hello, Daniela. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So I've got a list of questions here that I've written down from the people on Instagram. The first one is, what surprised you about starting medical school? And what is the hardest thing about medical school? Mm, those are good questions. Um, I think what has surprised me the most is that there's this misconception that when you start medical school, it's just going to take over your entire life and you are not going to have any friends. You're not going to be able to see your family. You're not going to be able to work or have any hobbies. And I think what surprised me is realizing actually that isn't true, that you can actually do so much more outside of medicine that it doesn't have to take over your entire life, although it might do at points, especially coming up to exams. But there is so much more that you can do that you can get involved in. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's fun. Um, I think one of the hardest things about medical school is, especially for me at the beginning, learning how to learn and learning what worked for me was pretty difficult because the volume of information, the amount that you have to learn is just insane especially grad entry medicine and during your first year so like adjusting to that and learning how to deal with that was really difficult for me but once you find something that works for you then it gets a little bit better but that was tough yeah and i, I agree i think for me the, the hardest thing was the, the sheer volume as well and yeah trying to get all that down in your own notes was just like a recipe for disaster so definitely understanding that that is not feasible so i guess you could relate both of those they, they both kind of come under the umbrella of time management right time management to manage all the difficult studies and time management to also be able to like make time for the stuff that mattered that matters to keep you rounded so do you have any like one tip or any tips that you found helped you really manage your time well so that you could get all of those things in yeah definitely planning so i plan my entire week every single week and I prioritize things that I need to do that are really urgent, that are the most important first. And then I schedule the rest of my life in. Um, also taking time out for myself to look after myself, to uh, exercise and to see friends and family, for example, they're also non-negotiable for me because they help me to reset and they're gonna make sure that I am productive and effective when I am studying. So I schedule time in for those as well every single week. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, so important. So obviously, Daniela, now you've been on the other side of the coin now that you're head of admissions at FutureDoc from being someone who's applying to teaching people who are applying. So tell me, what are some of the biggest insights that you've gained from understanding how to help people get into medical school that are different from when you were applying yourself? I think definitely taking enough time and having certain strategies in place to help you prepare as best as you possibly can. That's really important. Um, I often see students just completely underestimating the entire process and thinking that it's something that they can do, you know, just in a week. And it really isn't. The more support that you can get, the more resources that you can find, the more that you prepare for the medical school application, the much higher chances of success that you're going to have. So I think yeah making sure that you are aware of how much preparation is needed and making sure that you have the right resources to do that mm, cool. so that kind of brings you on really nicely to the next question which is if you could go back and give your former self the daniela who was applying to medical school some advice what would your advice be i think i'd say to plan my revision and my study just as i would like a, any other exam so make sure that you take it really seriously and also to not give up when things feel really difficult because they did feel really difficult at the time. Um, especially applying as a graduate, it can feel quite lonely as well because I hadn't been a university in quite a long time. I didn't know any medical students or any doctors. I had no one that I could talk to about it. And I guess you're like family and friends. They don't really understand what that process is like. So it can feel really lonely. 
So I'd say remember why you're doing it um, and don't get disheartened when things feel really difficult. Just push through and realize that it is worth it when you make it to the other side. So that's what I'd recommend mm, yeah, for myself. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, that's kind of, you know, when we built the Future Doc program to help people getting into medical school, that's kind of what we bore, we bore in mind. So, you know, there are the key areas that you need to plan well, focus on, put the right sort of time and attention into. And also, you know, the whole thing is the idea of community around it. So mm -hmm. that's partly why we do so well, because as a group, we're much stronger. So if you want to find out what those kind of key areas that you need to focus on and, and kind of dedicate the right amount of time to, I recommend you check out this video here, which kind of highlights really the five key areas to do that. Okay, cool. So next question is, so you're at Warwick. Tell me why you chose Warwick. Sure. So Warwick was a strategic choice for me. Um, as a grad, it is obviously very competitive to get a place onto one of those courses. So Warwick has the highest number of grad places in the UK. And I thought statistically, if I applied there, it was going to give me a higher chance of actually getting it an offer. And for me, my priority at the time was I just want to get in. So I was pretty flexible and happy to travel, even though I was from London and, you know, would have preferred to stay there, but I was open to other places and Warwick, you know, worked out in the end. Mm. And I mean, that's one of the big parts of success, right? Is choosing the right medical schools for you and numbers, statistics, looking at how many places there are, how many, what the application rates are, what those universities like compared to, you know, what strengths you have, what they value and marrying those up is such an important part. People forget the importance of those four choices. You only have four and you really need to match them well. And that is such a big part that contributes to the success. Yeah, sure. sure. I mean, it's not to say that you can't obviously apply to any other university. So let's take somewhere like King's, for example. They're an amazing university, but for graduates there are only 25 places. So it's not a lot. Statistically, you're going to have a much higher chance of applying somewhere with 100 to 200 places compared to King's. So, I mean, by all means, apply to both if you want to, but statistically, you will have a higher chance. Yeah, and I mean, that kind of kind of sparks the other area. So I always look at this. With med school choices, I always look at it in two ways, right? There's the, I want to get in and I'm choosing the places that, you know, just basically are going to give me the best chance. Mm -hmm. But there's also the, I really want to go to this place. And it doesn't, it's not all or nothing. You can be a bit of both. But it's if you are the second one and you really want to go to King's, for example, it's about understanding ahead of time this is where this is where planning comes into it is understanding okay so what does that university like what do i need to make sure that i'm doing now you know a year in advance to when i come to apply to them i'm ticking all those boxes and giving myself the chance really to get in front of the interview panel i'm very confident that once you have done all of those things and get in front of the interview panel. Your destiny is much more in your own hands. But really ticking all of those boxes to make yourself eligible and not just eligible from the criteria point of view, eligible to be the kind of candidate that they really want. So you need to do both. I would say the first level is getting in and understanding how to do that. And then the level above that is, okay, this university is where I really want to go. How do I now steer the ship towards being a really appealing candidate for that particular university? Exactly. Cool. So, albeit Warwick being a tactical choice, mm -hmm. how do you like it now that you're there? And how do you find Warwick as a whole? I really enjoy it. Um, I think that the program is organized really well. Um, you get a lot of exposure to clinic, to the clinical side um, and going into hospital very early on. Um, even in your first year. So I think that it gives you a very well-rounded um, experience. Um, the first year is basically learning all of the theory. So it is a lot of work. But then when you go into your more clinical years in year two and you're able to see everything that you've learned in your first year um, in practice, it feels really rewarding and it feels like you're putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together and it all just makes a lot more sense. Um, I like that everyone on the course is a grad. That's not something that is the same for other universities. In other universities, graduate entry medics uh, join with undergrad medics. So there can be quite a large 
age gap, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoy that everyone's a grad at, at Warwick. And yeah, there's I, a, a huge social side to it as well, which is quite fun. Yeah, totally. I was going to ask what the vibe was like between all grads. So I imagine there are many more of you, well, there are a lot more of you that are all on the same page. So. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has been through a degree already and knows, okay, this is what I really want to do. Most people have actually applied maybe two or three times, which is something that really surprised me as well, actually, mm -hmm. that, you know, you have this misconception when you're applying that everyone is just amazing and has got in first time. But actually, now that I'm here and having spoken to so many other medical students, most of them have applied two, three, four times. So that's yeah. something that really surprised me. And also, it's a good testament to how much people want it. I think if someone is, you know, so a lot of people, I wonder how many of the people who got in on their first attempt, had they not done so, how many would have stuck it out to the third or fourth, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, that brings me on to, so we were discussing earlier, and Daniela, I would say, has a relatively controversial opinion. So, okay, <laughs> hopefully this isn't going to get either of us cancelled in the medical application world. But so, uh, so Daniela, why, okay, let me tell, tell us your opinion about grad people applying to medicine and why you maybe think one, uh, are you going by grad, might be different, better, worse than going just straight from school as an undergrad? Yeah, well, I mean, I speak from my own experience. And for me, going into medicine as a graduate has definitely been the right thing. And I think just what we were saying about before, it gives you an opportunity to live life a little bit to know what studying and getting a degree is like, and then also work if you have the opportunity to, what that is like. I feel like it teaches you so much about yourself, about other people. I learned, for example, how to communicate, having how to improve my interpersonal skills, how to solve problems and think critically. And all of those things were before I even started medicine. And I use them now so much when I study, when I go into my placements. So. For me, learning that beforehand and really understanding, okay, medicine is the right thing for me and it's what I want to do. And then going into medicine a little bit later was the right thing for me. Maybe when I was 18, 19, I might not have had that maturity and that understanding. And I guess as a doctor, you're making life or death decisions every single day. So when you're very young, being able to make those decisions, I guess, isn't as easy and they can be quite challenging. So... That's why it was the right thing to me. Controversial. And, and so no, I, I agree. I mean, there's a lot of maturity that comes. And uh, having done a second degree when I was in, what was I 28, something like that, when I started dentistry after having done medicine when I was about 19. And dentistry was, uh, yeah, you asked me in a previous video about whether dentistry or medicine was easier. And I think dentistry, I only found dentistry easier partly because I'd done all of the like the hard stuff of laying the foundations of understanding medical learning and medical jargon mm -hmm. but also I feel like I knew how to learn when you're mature you, you're a bit more mature I don't know if I was mature but I was a bit more mature and um, and you know I knew how to learn and I knew what mattered I knew where to place my focus where not to and those things make a big difference I guess the only pushback I would have on the going down the grad route is what do you think about the you know it goes from, so let's say medicine, it's about 16, 17% chance of getting in as an undergraduate. But then when you go to graduate, the graduate side of the coin, you've got about 34 applicants to one place. So like about a two to 3% chance of getting in. Mm -hmm. Where do you kind of place the, the value on that? What would you, what would you do? Or what would you say to that? I think if it's really what you want to do, there are, it is totally possible and it is something that you that you can do and I'm testament to that I thought it wasn't something I was ever gonna be able to achieve and yet here I am so it is definitely possible if you are determined if you're focused and if you're willing to work hard at the application um I think once you know and you're determined this is what I want to go for making sure then that you hit all of those boxes and you meet all of the criteria for the universities that you're applying to that's key because you want to make sure that you know, they look at your application and they think this person meets every single one of our criteria. They check all of the boxes. And then when it comes to interview, being able to express yourself and demonstrate all of the amazing skills that you have already acquired 
so that admissions teams have no reason to doubt that you'd be an amazing doctor and that you already have everything that it takes to make an amazing doctor and medical student so mm, absolutely yeah i mean it, it's probably yeah it's, it's a harder route but it's definitely feasible and yeah. the key to grad applications and like you know turning those three percent chances into much more in your favor are looking at every single aspect of the med school application and just optimizing it and being head and shoulders above every other applicant in every single area so if you want to find out what those areas are i recommend that you check out this video that's going to appear here but um i want to thank daniela for answering my questions and answering and responding well to my pushbacks so you'll be seeing a lot more of daniela in the videos because since joining the team she's just demonstrated just how much she knows and how her knowledge is ridiculous with these things so we got her to do some videos and you'll be seeing her a lot more in other parts of the channel so thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you and Daniela looks forward to seeing you in some of those videos.